Hi friends, uh, welcome to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about constipation. And as, as I started preparing for this talk, I realized that I need to provide some background information and also get into the causes and then the treatment. So it looks like this will be a three-part conversation. Two that we'll run back to back and one will kind of come back to it just because I don't want to bore you to death. To me, it's an interesting topic. It may not be to everybody. Today, my focus is more on giving you an insight of what happens in the colon and the act of defecation or pooping and what goes into it. So it's quite common that I, we hear about constipation in the general population. It's about 14% of people have something to say uh, as it relates to the complaint of constipation. A few years ago, when we looked at the cost to healthcare, it was about $1.6 billion that were spent annually in the US to evaluate this. As you know, when we talk about constipation, we are talking about the colon, commonly known as the large bowel, and colon starts right at the anus down here and runs all the way across the top of the belly and goes down. So it's a long tubular structure. The main contents inside the colon are food residue that's digested, some water, electrolytes, bacteria, and gas. It's an interesting fact that about approximately 50% of our stool is actually bacteria. And if you can think about it, bacteria are normally so tiny that the amount of bacteria in the stool to cons constitute 50% of the stool that we pass or the bowel movement that we pass by weight is bacteria. So it's a lot of bacterial content. The colon, and we'll get into it, has four functions. It absorbs water. So when we drink water, it goes inside our stomach, goes through the small bowel, some of it is absorbed, and, and then the rest gets into the colon, and then the colon pulls that uh, through. The colon has uh, four main uh, functions. One is it keeps this food content and water to allow the water to get absorbed. So about a thousand cc of water is absorbed in the colon. And then the colon just mixes up the contents. And what happens when that mixing is done, certain amount of that food residual is broken down by bacteria. And there's a substance called short chain fatty acids that are produced by this bacterial decomposition, which the lining of the colon actually needs for its health. So that's the second function. It allows the bacteria to break down and produce the substance that our colon eats to stay healthy. The third aspect of it is that it allows the colon to, the colon on the left side stores the feces so that we have bowel movements once or twice or uh, whatever the frequency is so that we are not constantly going to the bathroom. And then of course the colon moves the contents all the way down to the uh, anal area to be expelled. Another interesting fact is that from the time we eat, let's say you take a bite of an apple, for the residue of the apple to get out, in general for an average person would be about 34 hours. Sometimes certain foods pass through quicker, sometimes some people have quicker transit, some people have slower movement or transit. Uh, so that's important to remember. On this slide, uh, what I want you to focus uh, on is this last portion of your colon, which is that rectum uh, and uh, the sigmoid colon, which is the last part of the colon. So if you look at the diagram, you can see that there's a hollow tubular structure and there's a muzzle sling that's around it called the puborectalis. When we sit down to poop, there's a complex mechanism that's operating there where the sphincter muzzle or the bottom opens up, this area straightens out, and the movement of the rectum and the last portion of the colon squeezes the stool out. All of this is happening without even us thinking, and normally that's uh, uh, that the trigger for that is this sensation that we get that we need to go to the bathroom or that we need to poop or defecate, and that's triggered by that stool sort of expanding that last portion of the rectum like a little balloon. That's what gives us the urge to go. I, I used to tell my kids, I tell my patients, I tell myself that the minute you have the urge, it's good to attend to that because 
that urge is uh, not a thing that comes through thinking but it's a sensation from the body and that's what triggers the bowel movement that can be a very simple way to train ourselves to uh, avoid constipation related problems most of the left side of the colon then is all emptied of the stool when we have a bowel movement including the rectum the other thing that I want to touch on on this next slide is uh, the consistency of the stool constipation sometimes can be a subjective word so therefore I tr we try to translate that when uh, as medical professionals as gastroenterologists to try to get a sense of what's called the Bristol stool chart and that tells me how the degree of constipation or, or the, what the stool uh, is actually uh, uh, coming on the Bristol scale if it's liquidy stool it's towards the seven and if it's a bumpy pellet like stool it's type one and that's just background information for you uh, to help as we prepare if you prepare for a conversation with perhaps a gastroenterologist or a, a gastroenterology nurse practitioner to have some sense of what the stool is looking like I think because it's very important um, and some of these things I think while uh, uh, um, uh, can produce laughter are important business uh, because you know we, we want to try to understand this and we want to try to help you when you come in uh, or when we are trying to assess constipation what the word describes is your perception or the patient perception of their difficulty with bowel movement in other words sometimes this you know uh, what patients mean is hard stool or difficulty with the act of sitting down and pooping it out in other words is the stool hard is the act of defecation hard or is there a sense of after pooping that one feels that there's still something there that's what I mean by incomplete evacuation I hope you've had a general sense of how what the colon does and in terms of function and how that plays into what's going to come which is how if any of these mechanisms get altered uh, how does that produce chronic constipation thank you and we'll see you in two weeks